Abandonment issues, for the most part, happen when children are young. They're a coping mechanism. They're what helps a child get through a very traumatic time. And there's lots of things that can cause abandonment issues. If you're dating someone who has them, it's really important you get their history, you get their childhood, especially if this is someone you really want to create a life with, a long-term committed relationship. Abandonment issues can come by having neglectful parents. It can happen by growing up with absent parents or parents who were taken away or something happened. Maybe one of them got chronically ill. So you grew up without that person's mentorship as strongly in your life. A beloved person passing away. I've seen abandonment issues from children who are now adults who lost a neighbor, who that neighbor was such an essential person that they looked forward to seeing with every day they did so many things that this neighbor's passing caused their own abandonment issues. A childhood friend moving away may set off an abandonment issue in a child which later becomes an adult dating problem or getting rejected by somebody you love in the teen years or tween years or witnessing your parents' divorce. Witnessing your parents' divorce is one of the most common ways that I work with couples now who I see have underlying abandonment issues in their dating life and then when they're with a significant other person. So sometimes when you have abandonment issues, it doesn't come across as a clingy or a real feeling of rejection or fear of rejection. It comes across in other ways. So these are things to look for in potential partners or maybe within yourself if you feel like you have abandonment issues. Extreme jealousy or clinginess. I mean, it's not rational. No matter who it is, could be anybody. Your partner is around. You are thinking this person is after your partner and you may accuse your partner unfairly a rejection of a partner before they reject you. Many times when you have abandonment issues, you are looking all the time, you're vigilant. So you will be quick to break up if there's any indication that this person may break up with you. Try to make new friends um, in order to never be alone. You may force yourself into superficial relationships so you don't have to bear the burden of being alone and feeling that intense loneliness. Underestimate themselves. Many times, if you were a kid who grew up and your best friend moved away and that was significant to you, what you may do is that may start something within you where you start underestimating yourself. You start thinking you're not good enough. All of a sudden, like it's within a two month time span of that, which is one of the things that we have to go back to and talk to our potential partner about if we're, if we're experiencing that they may have this abandonment issue type coping skill going on. Um, anxiety and depression or becoming complacent and putting up with, you know, intolerable stuff in the workplace. Many times this stems from abandonment issues. So how do you know if you yourself or your partner has abandonment issues, I've got some ways that I think are really gonna help you define it. Number one, you look for faults. Remember, you're trying to protect your heart, so you're gonna look for faults of others, possible breaks or leaks or cracks in relationships so you can be ahead of the game and you can get yourself out of that situation before it falls down or crumbles around you. People think you're quiet. Um, you always are involved with a partner because you don't want to be alone. You're what they call many times a serial dater. And it, rather than it being you want variety, it's that you don't want to be alone because you sense that that means there's something wrong with you, that you're not good enough, that you're unworthy. And that starts a whole cycle of a downward decline of, of low self-worth you find you are attracted to, to somebody during the chase. If you're one of those people that after the chase, you no longer desire them, that usually 
is an abandonment issue. You just haven't dealt with it. So you've told yourself it's because you like, you like the game, but the game is only part of it. The real issue is a coping skill with an abandonment issue that you, that you used long ago. Um, you want everything to be perfect so you won't be rejected. There's an idea that if you're good enough, the, the friend or the partner won't leave you. And this is indicative of children who are abandoned by parents or maybe neglected by parents. They grow up feeling like they're never good, at, never good enough. What you do to overcome this, well, it starts out with you have to, be, to become very self-aware. You have to own what is happening. You have to kind of go back. It helps if you journal your story, your life. What happened to you and how did you feel? What were the ages? Therapy will really help because therapists are going to help you untangle that web that more than likely becomes more convoluted and much more complicated. When someone talks to you about it, you identify the age, you can finally say, okay, for that little kid or that young person, that was a good coping mechanism, but it's not anymore. In fact, it's getting into my way. And then it becomes a process of a therapist helping you identify and practice new coping skills when you start feeling that trigger of abandonment in a relationship.